had a lot of trouble convincing hotel owners that it's important to make conservation or sustainability, even in that artistic way, a part of the projects that you do? You know, now um, that's, that's a good question. And last year, two years ago, yes. Now, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I just had this great interview for to do this project in Barcelona. And the last question the owner asked me is, is how do you stand about sustainability? Uh, and he asked me, well, how do I stand about sustainability? Hello, my name is Renee Leith Manos. Welcome to this podcast, Where To From Here? Featuring conversations about luxury travel and how it's changing in every pocket of the globe. Today, I'm speaking to Bill Bensley, who is an icon of the architecture and design hotel industry. He's designed more than 280 five-star hotels, many of which are four seasons, and all of which are spectacular and really do set the bar in terms of interiors and design. He is very focused these days on sustainability and conservation, and he's even found a newfound passion of painting. And all of the funds that he raises from his personal artwork goes directly to charity. He's going to be speaking to us from his Bangkok workshop, and he said to just be aware there might be some strange noises, and we may see his gorgeous Jack Russell dogs, each of whom wears a bell, so listen out for that. Where are we speaking to you from? I believe it's Bangkok. And can you talk us through the vibe and the feeling in Bangkok right now? Um, I, the, yeah, I'm, I'm sitting in my studio. I'm an architect uh, and we are probably at 50% here now. Normally I have about a hundred people here. So we get about 50 people here in the office. And I mean, you're someone who ordinarily, I believe travels some 30 uh, weeks of the year. How has this pandemic changed your life? I love it. I have um, uh, started to paint on the weekends. I paint maybe 12 hours a day on the weekends. And I have now uh, just over here, I've got a big gallery of something like 100 pieces. And when the tourists start to come back, I, I'm having a show. And then last month, uh, Renee, I'm really happy I've had my first uh, auction online of my own artwork and we raised something like um, 60,000 Australian dollars to go towards my foundation in, in Cambodia. That's so wonderful. I, I wanted to ask you, I mean, I've lost track, forgive me, of the actual number of projects and hotels that you have created. Is it 250? Uh, 222. Uh, right. I mean, how, how does a hotel designer who's designed some of the most spectacular hotels in the world, how did you move into com conservation and sustainability? Because I know how important those two things are to your work now. Well, I've um, had to say, I grew up on a, as far as many Australians do, I grew up on a farm in California. So, and I grew up growing the food for the family. And we had seven hives, hives of bees and, um, ducks and chickens and quail and hydroponic farming and rabbits and geese and this, this is this is how we ate um so that i had the really really good fortune and have english parents who knew how to do all of this and taught me how so so i grew up with sustainable although i didn't know the word sustainability i grew up with sustainable in a sustainable farm so we were we were self-sustaining um so it, it's become a, a very much a, my pathos, my, my reason for being. And I was also, I don't know if you know this, but I have an undergraduate in landscape architecture. That's how I started into hotel design. Can um, you tell us that story? Because I know that you grew up in Orange County near Knott's Berry Farm. I just love the story. I think it's so inspiring. Um, I was uh, in high school. I was maybe 17 at the time and I was I was head of the career studies program and this is a weird story um, but I was in charge of getting doctors and policemen the usual career people to come into the hotel or come into the high school and to teach us about what they do and I was calling the Anaheim fire department I made a wrong number this is a dial phone like this 
I dialed one number different and the guy named Rocco Campanazzi, landscape architect, Sam Perkis Rose picked up the phone. And I said, oh, I need an architect to come in. Can you do it? Can you come in? And he said, sure enough, I'll come in. And he was came in this, this that next week with a big roll of slides of Knott's Berry Farm. And the next, uh, within three months, I was working in his office, emptying the, emptying the, the trash cans. And then the next, the next year, I went to Cal Poly Pomona and uh, in, enrolled in landscape architecture. But had I not dialed even that one little tiny extra thing, I wouldn't be talking you, to you today, Renee. What do you make of that? Is, what, what do you make of it? Is it fate? Is it luck? What, how do you it's categorize? Luck. It's really luck, but it's really strange though, isn't it? Yeah. Do you think with the changing, with the new world that we are now living and traveling in, do you think sustainability is going to be more important to people? And was that one of the driving forces behind this incredible project that you've now created at Shintamani Wild in Cambodia? Yes, I do. I think that uh, people that travel now are becoming much, much choosier about the places that they stay based on what they give back and what the reason for being of that particular place is. So um, the story with Shintamani Wild was about seven years ago, we, my uh, Sukun's father, my partner in, for all the Shintamani hotels, we own four of them. His father came to us and said, there's going to be an auction of, of this giant piece of cardamom national forest. And we said, what? You're gonna auction off the forest? Yeah, for a tin titanium mine. So we, we went to the auction, we end up buying something like 10,000 hectares of land. And that's the greatest rainforest in Southeast Asia, isn't it? Is, and it just fell into our, it fell into our hands. It wasn't, wasn't cheap, but something like that, Renee should never, ever be sold. And so right. we sell, we, we paid the local people. And we are dedicated, at least for my entire lifetime, where we're dedicated to protecting this and all the animals and all the forest as it is. Because there's a great deal of pressure, especially now that COVID is very prevalent in, in Cambodia and the tourists have stopped. And so people are looking for alternatives. So they're going back to extracting what's, what they know they can extract from the forest. And that is, I think we lost a spotted leopard, for example, last week. No. Oh, they, they're, they're, they're one of them. They're almost on extinction, right? Yes. Yeah. They're, they're, they put up snares. We, we take down, I have a private army of about 115 guys and we take down miles of snares every year, miles of snares. Anyway, long story short, we took this giant piece of land and I put on 15 beautiful tents. We've had some superstars there. Um, Ed Sheeran has come to visit us. He was a wonderful guest. We charge a lot of money. And, but that, that money that we charge, then a large percentage goes back to, um, to the, the rangers uh, to be able to keep the, a huge piece of land uh, safe or at least somewhat poacher free. Someone like Ed Sheeran, I mean, the guests are coming there to see what's going on, to, to see the nature or to, to see the devastation that would have happened if you hadn't stepped in. No, he, he was very much into the, the idea that we were giving back. And you know, he was just such a delightful guest that he, we have Bensley Butler. Uh, Butler asked if he could go and see him in, uh, in concert. I, said, I think his next concert was actually in Sydney after he, he played here. So he, the, but he said, sure, the Butler, yeah, you can come. And then can I bring my family? And he, Ed said, sure, yeah. <laughs> there was 17 in his family. <laughs> <laughs> and they all got on the plane. They all went. Really? They, a, they all went. They had a great time. Yeah. <laughs> what a great story. So, you know, you're giving back, but he gave back too. He sure did. He was a delightful, delightful person. Wow. And yeah. tell me, you know, your designs are just so inspiring, creative, you know, a lot of them are very theatrical. How do you get your inspiration? What, who's your muse or what is your muse? I mean, there's so many properties. Well, you know what? It's different every single time it's different. And I, I want to tell you a story about, um, I, I did a, 
I just finished last year, I finished a really nice property. It's in Sapa. It's in Northern Vietnam. It's on the Chinese border and it's on the Mount Frangipan, which is the highest mountain in, in Southeast Asia. And this M, M gallery is, a, is kind of cool, but the, it, it, there was a catalyst and I was shopping at the, the flea market in Paris in the North by the North station. And we were walking along and I saw in the, in the window of this vintage clothing shop, a Vietnamese style hat, but it had a, this, this white and pink um, polka dot covering the hat. And I thought, well, that's really, that's really, you know, haute couture is so beautiful. So I went in and I bought this hat and it was made in the 1920s, but clearly this is when the French were occupying, occupying Vietnam. And somebody had the idea to put this fabric on top of it to make this wow. beautiful woman's, beautiful, stunning woman's hat. But the idea said to me that, you know, the hill tribes of, of Vietnam have influenced French haute couture in the 1920s. So that was the catalyst for this entire hotel. In fact, I read that um, there's a recent property, now forgive me, Bill, I can't remember which one it was, where you created a theatrical entrance with these huge, big towering, um, uh, sort of pillars at the front and it was yeah. like a theater with sort of lights and oh, yeah. how... St. Regis in Bali I think you're talking about I think that's right I thought it was Bali how yeah. did, I mean how did you come up with that um well you know what we in in all in all vernacular Balinese architecture in fact all vernacular architecture of in of Asia that, that there's to any compound to anybody's house in Japan, especially, there's always a beautiful gate. And then, yes. yeah. So that was that was just a Bensley gate on steroids. Yeah, <laughs> I have to ask: Do you often blow your budget? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think that uh, it's a yes or a no answer, really, Bill. <laughs> uh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> and of your projects, I know you probably hate this question too, um, but you, aside from the ones you've already mentioned, which are the projects you're most proud of? Um, I, I really like Shintamani Wild. I think that has a little bit step forward towards social responsibility and it's, it's saving a huge amount of forest. And the tents are incredible. You arrive by zip line. That's the only way you can get into the camp is by climbing this 10, this 10 floor uh, zip line tower. You zip line, it's, a, it's Southeast Asia's longest zip line. You zip line across a waterfall. You walk down the water on the other side of the river and you, then you zip line across into the landing bar. Do you have a lot of trouble convincing hotel owners that it's important to make conservation or sustainability, even in that artistic way, a part of the projects that you do? You know, now um, that's, that's a good question. And last year, two years ago, yes. Now, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I just had this great interview for to do this project in Barcelona. And the last question the owner asked me is, is how do you stand about sustainability? Uh, and he asked me, well, how do I stand about sustainability? And then we had another hour conversation. <laughs> what else? Talk us through some other trends that you can see coming in terms of hotel designs. Well, the, one of the, the things that I said last night on this big pitch to this ho Hotel de Arts in Barcelona was I wanted to take a part of the entrance, of their entrance, which is kind of like an, uh, an underground car park, but it's above grade. I wanted to bring a lot of light into it and I wanted to take the cars away, the parking away and make a, a, an 800 square meter space, a place for young people of Barcelona to display their art. Brilliant. Uh -huh. And so it, I think that the future of hotels has to be the replacement. And this, I hope this doesn't offend anyone, but the replacement or the addition to what we used to look at as being our churches so that it's a place where uh, you have people's attention for some, for, for three, four or five days, teach them something, teach them something, give back to society. Even if it's, even if it's the smallest hotel and you're next to, you're next to a, a nursery next door, 
you know, take the, the kids' paintings that the, that the kids are nursing, put those in the lobby and, and say that, you know, we support one kid per year. Do something. But yes. That's the key is to just, don't just take all the money in the world and go and buy a big freaking lot, yacht that you don't need, right? If you, if you own a hotel, you know, put something back into society. Yeah. And look, just in closing, Bill, I ask all of um, my guests who are on the show, where to from here? And it can be anything. It can be where you're going for your day today or where you're traveling next or anything. Uh, I'm going home to a party tonight, but it's interesting party in that I'm having it at home. It's just a small party, but do you know the, the book Shantaram? It is, um, it's a, a great Australian, written by an Australian, and it's about a, a, a fella that that escaped from a pr uh, prison and moved to India. And so a Apple, Apple TV is going to, and, and it's all, all produced in Australia and also now here in Bangkok. But the main um, stars like Charlie Humnan, they're here in Bangkok. And anyway, I met them in quarantine. <laughs> so, so it's long story short, I'm going home to have uh, uh, I'm going home to have a party with the guys that are putting on the Shantaram show. <laughs> Fantastic. What you're telling me is quarantine is a new place to make friends. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I love it. Well, Bill Benson, it's been such a thrill to speak with you. I'm a huge fan of your work and now a fan of yours. And I hope to speak to you again soon. Yeah, thank you so much. It was great fun talking to you. Thank you, Bill. Hey, cheers then, Renee. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe here and follow us on Instagram and Facebook for regular travel updates. You can also hear our episodes on Spotify and Apple Podcasts.